Roy's debut novel, it is a story about the childhood experience. The God of Small Things is a family drama novel written by Indian writer Arundhati Roy. Roy's debut novel, it is a story about the childhood experiences of fraternal twins whose lives are destroyed by the love laws prevalent in 1960s Kerala, India. The novel explores how small, seemingly insignificant things shape people's behavior in their lives. The novel also explores the lingering effects of casteism in India. It won the Booker Prize in 1997. Susanna Arundhati Roy, born the 24th of November 1961, is an Indian author best known for her novel The God of Small Things 1997 which won the Man Booker Prize for Fiction in 1997 and became the best-selling book by a non-expatriate Indian author. She is also a political activist involved in human rights and environmental causes. The God of Small Things was Roy's first book and only novel until the 2017 publication of the Ministry of Utmost Happiness 20 years later. She began writing the manuscript for The God of Small Things in 1992 and finished four years later, in 1996. It was published the following year. The potential of the story was first recognized by Pankaj Mishra, an editor with HarperCollins, who sent it to three British publishers. Roy received £500,000 in advance and rights to the book were sold in 21 countries. The story is set in Amanam, now part of Kottayam district in Kerala, India. The novel has a disjointed narrative, the temporal setting shifts back and forth between 1969, when fraternal twins Rahel, a girl, and East Happen, a boy, are seven years old, and 1993, when the twins are reunited. Anuapi is desperate to escape her ill-tempered father, known as Papaji, and her bitter, long-suffering mother, known as Mamaji. She leaves Amanam, and to avoid returning, she marries a man only known by the name of Baba in Calcutta. She later discovers that he is an alcoholic, and he physically abuses her and tries to pimp her to his boss. Amu gives birth to Esther and Rahel, leaves her husband, and returns to Amanam to live with her parents and brother, Chechko. Chichko has returned to India from England following his divorce from an English woman, Margaret, and the subsequent death of Papaji. The multi-generational, Syrian Christian family home in Amanam also includes Papaji's sister, Navoni Aip, known as Baby Kochimma. As a young girl, Baby Kochimma fell in love with Father Mulligan, a young Irish priest who had come to Amanam. To get closer to him, baby Kochimma converted to Roman Catholicism and joined a convent against her father's wishes. After a few months in the convent, she realized that her vows brought her no closer to the man she loved. Her father eventually rescued her from the convent and sent her to America for education. Because of her unrequited love for Father Mulligan, baby Kochimma remained. Unmarried for the rest of her life, becoming deeply bitter over time. Throughout the book, she delights in the misfortune of others and constantly manipulates events to bring calamity. It didn't matter that the story had begun, because Kathakali discovered long ago that the secret of the great stories is that they have no secrets. The great stories are the ones you have heard and want to hear again. The ones you can enter anywhere and inhabit comfortably. They don't deceive you with thrills and trick endings. They go to small things. The death of Margaret's second husband Joe in a car accident prompts Chichko to invite her and their daughter, Sophie, to spend Christmas in Amanam. On the road to the airport to pick up Margaret and Sophie, the family visits a theater, and on the way, they encounter a group of communist protesters who surround the car and humiliate baby Kochimma. Rahel thinks she sees Velutha, a servant who works for the family's pickle factory, 
paradise pickles in preserve, and does extra chores for Mamuchi, among the protesters. Later at the theater, Esta is sexually molested by the arranged drink lemon drink man, a vendor working at the snack counter. Easter's traumatic experience factors into the tragic events at the heart of the narrative. Braha's assertion that she saw Velutha in the communist mob causes baby Kochumma to associate Velutha with her humiliation at the protesters' hands, and she begins to harbor enmity toward him. Brahil and Esther form an unlikely bond with Velutha and comes to love him. Amu soon gets attracted to Velutha mainly because of her children's love towards him, and eventually, they begin a short-lived romantic affair. Velutha is a Dalit, the lowest caste, meaning his romance with Amu is forbidden, and culminates in tragedy for the family. When her relationship with Velutha gets exposed by Velutha's father Velia Papin, Amu is locked in her room and Velutha is banished. In a fit of rage, Amu blames the twins for her misfortune and calls them millstones around her neck. Distraught, Esta and Rahel decide to escape. Their cousin, Sophie also joins them. During the night, as they try to reach the history house, an abandoned house across the river, their boat capsizes and Sophie drowns. When Margaret and Chichko return from a trip where they had gone to arrange Margaret's and Sophie's return trips, they see Sophie's corpse laid out on the sofa. Baby Kochum goes to the police and accuses Veluta of being responsible for Sophie's death. The group of policemen hunt Veluta down, savagely beat him for crossing caste lines, and arrest him on the brink of death. The twins, huddling in the abandoned house, witness the horrific scene. Later, when they reveal the truth to the chief of police Thomas Matthew, he is alarmed. Not unknown to the fact that Velutha is a communist, he is afraid that if word gets out that the arrest and beating were wrongful, it will cause unrest among the local communists led by comrade K. N. M. Pillai. Matthew threatens to hold baby Kochumma responsible for falsely accusing Velutha. To save herself, baby Kochumma tricks Esta and Rahel into believing that the two of them would be implicated as having murdered Sophie out of jealousy and would surely be incarcerated with Amu. She thus convinces them to lie to the inspector that Velutha had abducted them and had murdered Sophie. Velutha dies of his injuries overnight. After Sophie's funeral, Amu goes to the police to tell the truth about her relationship with Velutha. Afraid of being exposed, baby Kochumma convinces Chichko that Amu and the twins were responsible for his daughter's death. Chichko kicks Amu out of the house and forces her to send Esther to live with his father. Esther never sees Amu again. Amu dies alone in a mortal a few years later at the age of 31. After a turbulent childhood and adolescence in India, Rahel gets married and goes to America. There, she divorces before returning to Eminem after years of working dead-end jobs. Esther and Rahel, now 31, are reunited for the first time since they were children. They had been haunted by their guilt and their grief-ridden pasts. Toward the end of the novel, Esther and Rahel engage in incestuous sex, and it said that what they shared that night was not happiness, but hideous grief. The novel comes to an end with a nostalgic recounting of Amu and Veluta's love affair. Characters of the novel Esther Esther, which is short for East Happen Yeko, is Rahul's twin brother. He is a serious, intelligent, and somewhat nervous child who wears beige and pointy shoes, and has an Elvis puff. His experience of the circumstances surrounding Sophie's visit is somewhat more traumatic than Rahul's, beginning when he is sexually abused by a man at a theatre. The narrator emphasizes that Easter's two thoughts in the pickle factory, stemming from this experience that 
anything can happen to anyone and that it's best to be prepared are critical in leading to his cousin's death. Esther She is the twin chosen by baby Kochamma because he is more practical and responsible to go into Velutha's cell at the end of the book and condemn him as his and Rahul's abductor. This trauma, in addition to the trauma of being shipped or returned to Calcutta to live with his father, contributes to Easter's becoming mute at some point in his childhood. He never goes to college and acquires a number of habits, such as wandering on very long walks and obsessively cleaning his clothes. He is so close to his sister that the narrator describes them as one person, despite having been separated for most of their lives. He is repeatedly referred to as silent as he gradually slips into an unbreakable silence after he is returned. Prahel Prahel is the partial narrator of the story and is Easter's younger sister by 18 minutes. As a girl of seven, her hair sits on top of her head like a fountain in a Love in Tokyo band and she often wears red-tinted plastic sunglasses with yellow rims. An intelligent and straightforward person who has never felt socially comfortable, she is impulsive and wild, and it is implied that everyone but Veluta treats her as somehow lesser than her brother. In later life, she becomes something of a drifter, several times, the narrator refers to her emptiness. After the tragedy that forms the core of the story, she remains with her mother, later training as an architectural draftsman and engaging in a failed relationship with an American, elements of which parallel the author's own life story. Ammu Ammu is Rahul's and Easter's mother. She married their father, referred to as Baba, only to get away from her family. He was an alcoholic and she divorced him when he started to be violent toward her and her children. She went back to Eminem, where people avoided her on the days when the radio played, her music, and she got a wild look in her eyes. When the twins are seven, she has an affair with Velutha. This relationship is one of the cataclysmic events in the novel. She is a strict mother, and her children worry about losing her love. Velutha Velutha is a paravan, an untouchable, who is exceptionally smart and works as a carpenter at the Ike family's pickle factory. His name means white in Malayalam because he is so dark. He returns to Eminem to help his father, William Papin, take care of his brother, who was paralyzed in an accident. He is an active member of the local communist movement. Velutha is extremely kind to the twins and has an affair with Amu for which he is brutally punished. Veluta has one brother, Kuttipin, who is forever bedridden because of his paralysis from the chest downwards. Chachko Chachko is Easter's and Rahul's maternal uncle. He is four years elder to Ammu, one he meets Margaret in his final year at Oxford and marries her afterward. They have a daughter, Sophie, whose death in Eminem is central to the story. Baby Kochamma Baby Kochami, the twins' maternal great-aunt. She maintains an attitude of superiority because of her education as a garden designer in the United States and her burning, unrequited love for an Irish Catholic priest, her relationship with whom is the only meaningful event in her life. Her own emptiness and failure spark bitter spite for her niece's children, further driven by her prudish code of conventional values. Her spite ultimately condemns the twins, the lovers, and herself to a lifetime of misery. Themes Indian History and Politics Indian history and politics shape the plot and meaning of the god of small things in a variety of ways. Some of Roy's commentary is on the surface, with jokes and snippets of wisdom about political realities in India. 
However, the novel also examines the historical roots of these realities and develops profound insights into the ways in which human desperation and desire emerge from the confines of a firmly entrenched caste society. Caste Relations and Cultural Tensions In addition to her commentary on Indian history and politics, Roy evaluates the Indian post-colonial complex, or the cultural attitudes of many Indians toward their former British rulers. After Amu calls her father a shit wiper in Hindi for his blind devotion to the British, Chichko explains to the twins that they come from a family of Anglophiles, or lovers of British culture, trapped outside their own history and unable to retrace their steps. He goes on to say that they despise themselves because of this. A related inferiority complex is evident in the interactions between untouchables and touchables in Amenim. Velia Papin is an example of an untouchable so grateful to the touchable caste that he is willing to kill his son, Velutha, when he discovers that Velutha has broken the most important rule of caste segregation, that there be no inter-caste sexual relations. In part, this reflects how many untouchables have internalized caste segregation. Nearly all of the relationships in the novel are somehow clawed by cultural and caste tension, including the twins' relationship with Sophie, Chaco's relationship with Margaret, Papachi's relationship with his family, and Amu's relationship with Velutha. Characters such as Baby Kochamman Papachi are the most rigid and vicious in their attempts to uphold that social code while Amu and Velutha are the most unconventional and daring in unraveling it. Roy implies that this is why they are punished so severely for their transgression. Forbidden Love One interpretation of Roy's theme of forbidden love is that love is such a powerful and uncontrollable force that it cannot be contained by any conventional social code. Another is that conventional society somehow seeks to destroy real love, which is why love in the novel is consistently connected to loss, death, and sadness. Also, because all romantic love in the novel relates closely to politics and history, it is possible that Roy is stressing the connection of personal desire to larger themes of history and social circumstances. Love would therefore be an emotion that can be explained only in terms of two people's cultural backgrounds and political identities. Social Discrimination The story is set in the caste society of India, at a time when members of the untouchable Paravina Parin caste were not permitted to touch members of higher castes or enter their houses. The untouchables were considered polluted beings. They had the lowliest jobs and lived in subhuman conditions. In India, the caste system was considered a way to organize society. Roy's book shows how terribly cruel such a system can be. Along with the caste system, readers see an economic class struggle. The Ites are considered upper class. They are factory owners, the dominating class. Mamichi and baby Kochumma would not deign to mix with those of a lower class. However, Roy shows other types of less evident discrimination. For example, there is religious discrimination. It is unacceptable for a Syrian Christian to marry a Hindu and vice versa, and Hindus can only marry a Hindu from the same caste. In more than one passage of the book, the reader feels Rahul's and Easter's discomfort at being half Hindu. Baby Kochumma constantly makes disparaging comments about Hindus. On the other hand, there is discomfort even between Christian denominations as is shown by Papuchi's negative reaction when Baby Kochumma converts to Catholicism. Tichko suffers more veiled racial discrimination, as it seems his daughter also does. His English wife's parents were shocked and disapproving that their daughter would marry an Indian, no matter how well educated. Sophie, at one point, mentions to her cousins that they are all walk, while she is half walk. The Ites are very class conscious and feel a need to maintain their status. 
Discrimination is a way of protecting their privileged position in society. Betrayal Betrayal is a constant element in the story. Love, ideals, and confidence are all forsaken, consciously and unconsciously, innocently and maliciously, and these deceptions affect all of the characters deeply. Baby Kochami capable of lying and double-crossing and even whom she sees as a threat to her social standing. This is a consequence of her loss of respectability after becoming a Roman Catholic nun to be close to Father Mulligan, despite her father's disapproval. Her fear is reminiscent of that of Comrade Pillai, who betrays both Veluta and Chichko to further his own interests and that of his political party. The greatest tragedy is that of Velotha, the only truly non-corrupt adult in the story, who becomes the repeated victim of everyone's deception, from Comrade Pillai's to baby Kochamma's, to his own father's and, most heartbreakingly, that of Esta, who at seven years old is manipulated into accusing Velotha of crimes that he did not commit. Misogyny and Women in India Another important aspect of social discrimination that Roy deals with is misogyny, mainly through the character of Amu. She often draws attention to the different opportunities on offer for women and men in India and the fact that, since Amu has been married and divorced, she sees her life as effectively over. This is one of the main factors that influences her to start her love affair with Velotha. We also see her treatment by a police officer, who taps her breasts with his baton as though he was choosing mangoes from a basket, commenting on objectification of women. Narrative and Writing Style Non-Sequential Narrative The God of Small Things is not written in a sequential narrative style in which events unfold chronologically. Instead, the novel is a patchwork of flashbacks and lengthy sidetracks that Meet together to tell the story of the Ibe family. The main events of the novel are traced back through the complex history of their causes, and memories are revealed as they relate to one another thematically and as they might appear in Rahul's mind. Although the narrative voice is omniscient, it is loosely grounded in Rahul's perspective, and all of the episodes of the novel progress toward the key moments in Rahul's life. Point of View the book is narrated in the third person. However, during a great part of the narrative, the reader sees everything through Rahul's eyes. This gives the reader special insight into the happenings and characters. Throughout the book, there are various moments that intersect. In one moment, everything is seen through a child's eyes, with a child's feelings and rationals. Later, the same facts, objects and people are seen in a completely different light. Setting The story is set in the village of Aminam in the Kottayam district of Kerala, India. The main part of the plot takes place in 1969, a time of changes in ideology and influence. India is a very complex society with various cultural and religious habits and beliefs. Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, Christians, and Muslims share the same space. Society is divided not only by the very strict caste system but also by class consciousness. Many languages are spoken in India, but the higher classes make a point of speaking English, sending their sons to study in England and adopting certain English habits. Kerala itself, where the story is set, has a complex social setup, with Hindus, Muslims, and Christians displaying different lifestyles and traditions. It also has the largest Christian population in India, predominantly St. Thomas Christians or Syrian Christians. In the Kottayam district, Christians are a majority. Roy has described the book as an inextricable mix of experience and imagination. Sequential Discovery this is also part of the way Roy uses real-life places and people that she has shifted and altered for use in the story.
The story's many elements come together to construct a diverse look at one instance of Indian culture and the effect of the caste system on life and love during a time of post-colonialism. As the children try to form their own identities, meaning and renaming themselves in the process, Roy places in parallel the effect of the process by intertwining the past and the present. This process also echoes the progression of the Indian people, like that of all cultures that try to find ways to maintain their traditions in a time of increasing globalization. The God of Small Things is a work of fiction but some critics have tried to find autobiographical parallels in the novel, while at the same, warning against drawing any simplistic connections between the novel and the writer's life. Some of the similarities between Roy's life and that of the characters she creates include her own Syrian Christian and Hindu lineage, the divorce of her parents when she and her brother were very young, her return to the family home in Eminem after her mother's divorce, and her education in an architectural school, to name a few. Some critics also attribute the political awareness manifested in The God of Small Things to Roy's early life influences from her mother who was an activist and feminist.